If you're out shopping for a Ford F-150, a video you probably want to watch. Hey, it's Tim, Pick Truck Plus, SUV Talk, and I have a list of known problems, and I'll give you some more details behind these known problems in this video. So let's go ahead and pull it up. It's on pickuptrucktalk.com. I wrote this a while ago. I'll put a link below in the description and also probably top of the comments. If you want to look through it yourself, you can. Typically, I do these lists based on carcomplaints.com and NHTSA because of reports. And I have details on the website of more of those issues in those different stories I've done. But in this case, we're looking at the F-150 Gen 14 Forum. Thanks to my friend, Forum Friends. I did this with the Toyota Tundra and it uh, really worked out well. They, they gave me less information. And it seems like it matches a lot what I see. It gets re reports and car compliance. It seems like it's the same thing over and over again that's going on. So we're going to start this list with major problems. We'll go kind of minor issues. And we'll kind of give you some more information when you're out there shopping. So the major issue is, without a doubt, the 10-speed automatic transmission. It's the single largest issue affecting the 2021 through 2024 40 50 trucks. I know the 2024 models aren't out yet, um, but it's just a refresh on the interior and the tailgate. So I anticipate they're still going to have some issues with this because they're working through some things. So this was a new transmission that came out and is co-developed with General Motors. The parts are about the same but the software is a lot different. Information is a lot different. In the case of the Ford 10-speed transmission, it's a learning transmission, and so it adjusts to your driving needs. And so that causes some problems as well. So some people who hot rod it right away when they're buying dealership may experience some issues later on with some harsh shifting. Other people just have flat-out problems with it. They've had it replaced. They've had dealerships you know, go through and replace the whole truck or reflash the software to fix the learning issues. I mean, so just, just continues to be issues. What's interesting is that GM's 10 speed hasn't had the same kind of issues as the Ford 10 speed has had, which is head scratching. So I, I'm anticipating it's still going to be an issue uh, moving forward. And that's why I put it in the story because it continues to be something out there. And I want you to be aware. Now, like I said, 2024 models are just starting ship, shipping to dealerships. Could that be an issue? Maybe, maybe not. But I just want to make sure you're, not, you're an informed consumer. So more issues going on is, uh, yeah, there, there's a whole uh, uh, class action lawsuit. And then there's, this is this is interesting as well. So one of the uh, forum users, Purpose Hork says, clear the adaptive tables of the four scan. That is the learning transmission. You can clear those tables. And if you change some of that stuff in the system to the dealership, it seems like it works pretty well. It seems like that it's going to happen. So, you know, if you reset it and drive calmly on service streets for about 30 minutes, set the initial values, which is that software, then over the next 250 to 500 miles, it will relearn your driving style and adapt to it. And I've had numerous people reach out to me and I've said, hey, go to dealership, get reflashed, and they've done it and it's fixed the issue. I've also had numerous people reach out to me and say, I reflashed, it didn't work. Yeah, that sucks because that may be a new transmission. So it's it's interesting. It's just it's one of those nagging issues that hopefully is nipped in the bud with more data. But these things take years to get done. You know, you, you would think that, all right, Ford noticed the issue and they just stopped to reflash and they just fixed it. Well, no, it takes years of validation and testing and more details and more information to get this fixed. Things don't get changed in the mode world overnight at all, any brand. Another uh, issue is people talking about there's just so many recalls and there is a lot of recalls these days. Does recall equal a quality issue? There's some people that believe that more recalls mean more quality issues. They believe that's that's related. But there's other brands that recall everything, and they recall massive stuff. And it's just for a sheer issue here, issue there, it doesn't really equal the quality things. So it's just something to keep in mind. But there's a lot of customers I talked to up at the Gen Forum that were really frustrated about just the many recalls. There's a sheared bolt recall, uh, which is interesting as well. But in fact, Ford led the industry in 2021 with 65 recalls off, affecting an astonishing 8.6 million vehicles. So they have led the industry the last couple of years for the number of recalls they've had. So I, I would anticipate if you're going to get this truck, and I owned a 2021 F-150, now just be aware that you're probably going to have some recalls. There's been recalls in parking lights, wiper motor, brake harness. Uh, one particularly scary recall, this was this kind of got my attention, is for power boost owners with the maximum tow package. So a combination of things. Power boost pack, package, which is the hybrid system, and the maximum tow package. Get these two together, and you have a sheared bolt. <laughs> Snake Bitten talked about this, uh, that the uh, forum user's name. And he's got these photos. You can see the bolt right there in the middle of the axle. That's kind of, it, it is sheared forward. It looks like it's not quite connected. And then when you look a little bit closer at it, let me, excuse me, my light turned on and off. Uh, when you look a little bit closer at it, you can see the second photo where the bolt is just sheared off. 
So in the first photo, the bolt is just kind of resting in the axle, um, like the, the axle housing there. I would, I, that's what I'm going to call it. Could be something another terminology. You have the studs, you have the stuff, it's all taken off. And the second photo, just the, you can see the remnants of the bolt that's stuck into the axle. Yeah. So he had his dealership replace this. Other people have this should replace it. Just kind of a scary thing if you don't notice it and something that you have to keep an eye on, which is kind of hard to see sometimes with the way the wheels and things are set up. Uh, electrical gremlins. So uh, most brands nowadays, reliability is a concern for electronics, uh, software issues, or my phone will connect to my Uconnect system or the, the, the was it Sync 5, which is Ford system. That tends to be the biggest issues we see these days. And so a lot of them just talking about there's just a lot of electrical gremlins, things going on. People have one guy said his uh, 2019 F350 had one bad leaf pack, bad rear differential, almost immediately off sales lot, and the same trailer connector electrical modules within the same time frame of the second trailer connector harness. So his dad's 2016 F350 had the identical issues that his 2019 F350 had with terms electrical gremlins. And so I, I don't know, it's interesting that they have the same issues. Uh, another issue is dead batteries. This is interesting. This was uh, kind of eye opening for me. So as you know, most trucks these days do over-the-air updates. They don't they turn off right away if the turbos are too hot. There's just a variety of things they do these days to make them just, well, trucks are different. And so it's interesting. A lot of people are reporting dead batteries and having a battery replaced. And uh, this gentleman, uh, Hammond Man, says it's more of a weak battery situation. Forge charge logic is to get the battery at 80% state of charge. Unfortunately, with all the connected features, there's a parasitic loss associated with those features. The BMS logic, or the on the F-50 sucks, uh, once I get around 70% indicated, it will begin to back off voltage. As such, even people that drive 15, 20 minutes each way to work will find they're not getting enough charge to the 12 volt battery to satisfy the needs of the features of the truck. Now he's doing this. I mean, he's got built, he's got the four scan built in. He's got some, you can add like bank stash, uh, digital gauge, and you can learn that information about your truck this way. So on approach, the welcome lighting won't even turn on, the interior lights may not. And another issue is the remote features go to sleep, including the head unit which will then boot upon starting. Not much an issue with ICE F-150s, but in the Ford EVs, when the low battery it is, issue is present, many things indicating climate gated behind a computer screen. It's possible to already be driving a public roadway before someone can adjust climate due to system startup. So he's saying all these features add a little bit of parasitic loss. And if you don't drive enough, you don't charge the battery up all the way. And uh, he said, now recently with the F-150s that have begun the uh, Ford EVs, excuse me, has begun to allow it to turn on the DC-DC converter and charge the 12-volt battery if it sees a parasitic loss. Look in the Mach-E, for instance, if the 12-volt battery it gets drained, the process to get into it into, into it includes removing a door to power electronic hood release motor. Once the hood, you have to tear off two panels, including the braking clips in the process, just to reach the jump points to provide a 12-volt power to get to the car. There's no key slots anywhere, has no physical key at all, and all the doors are completely electrical. We've seen this, uh, uh, my friends over at Boulder had a uh, GMC Hummer, same issue. They had to find the uh, spot to be able to manually pop the hood. And then you got to go in there to find the 12 volt jump battery to get it going again. So not an easy process, something I'm sure that Ford's looking at and getting feedback from the owners here and discussing for uh, future things. Uh, differential housing is breaking. This is really scary. Um, this, is a, this is a photo that was posted on the forum. This is a cracked front differential. And you can just see that the housing is just cracked all the way through, just a solid crack in the, the casting. So they think that it's a bad cast from factory. A uh, user Cypher is on his fourth differential cover in just 26 months. Now, this one's a little controversial in that the, Cy the Cypher, what he does is he puts his truck in four-wheel drive with a locking rear to get up his driveway. And then when he gets to the top, he turns. Now, that created quite a concern because if you lock the rear differential and turn, you put quite a bit of pressure on the binding. That's not the way rear differentials work. You should not turn with the rear differential locked in. But he said he's done it before, different brands, different trucks, and had no problems, especially GM. But in this case, if he gets his electronic differential locked and gauged, so he can pull his trailer up a hill, where at the top he makes a 90-degree turn while the trailer will, will still be in an incline. So he's got to get up the hill with his trailer, to get to the top, and turn because of the way the steep driveway is. So, Yeah. I don't know. It's it's an interesting conversation, but I don't think the housing should break like that, especially the fourth one. That's that's quite a bit of either bad casting factory or just a lot of abuse. And I'm not sure what else this guy can do. I mean, he's got to like he's got to get up the hill and he's got to turn. So 
Is it his fault? Is it the t Hill's fault? Is it the truck's fault? I don't know. But I've, I've seen that. And then there was somebody else. This photo courtesy of Hot Rod Mex. He has he had the same kind of cracked differential. So it wasn't just one guy. There were several people over there that had a cracked differential housing. Broken for no reason, which is just fascinating to think that much cast iron would get cracked like that. Or that excuse me, that much casting would get cracked like that. It's not cast iron. Um, but it, it is interesting. Uh, at less common issues. Uh, the less common issues, for example, some people have, have reported issues like rattling, insulation falling down in the cabin. I know this one quite well, too. I had quite a bit of rattling in the A-pillars for the F-150 power boost I had before I sold it. It was starting to drive me nuts, I just popping in the A-pillars. Um, and I had an issue with the, the window. If I remember right, if, if I had to roll it up just right to get the sound to not go in the cabin. So I've had some of the, so I've had the same kind of less common little minor issues that can get resolved dealership. I sold my truck before I got dealership fixed it because that's what I do. I keep it for a year. I sell it. I buy something else. Just the way the business works. Electrical issues are mainly with radio and technology not working how it should. We've seen that in different brands. The radio goes bad. The technology doesn't work the way it should. Phone can't connect. That is new frontier for known issues. And then finally, let's talk about engine issues. I have a whole thing right in here, but I'm going to go back to you and talk to you full screen on this. So engine issues, it's always a big conversation in the comments. People are like, okay, so Ford offers two turbocharged engines, the 2.7 liter and the 3.3 liter. They also have the 5 liter V8. And then if you go to the Ford Raptor, you get a 6.2 liter and all this kind of cool stuff. Or Raptor R, excuse me. Um, so you have, a, you have a debate here that happens quite a bit. Oh, excuse me. You can say the power boost is turbo as well. Power boost using the 3.5 liter uh, twin turbo engine. You have the debate between the turbo crowd and the natural aspirated crowd. The turbo crowd loves the performance of it. They love the power boost features. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the power boost. Uh, love zone lighting, love power on the board. On board. And so th there's issues as well. The five liter crowd's like, well, I don't want any turbos. Turbos break, they go bad. I want natural aspirated V8. I want all that. I don't want any of this turbo stuff. Um, and unfortunately now the, the, the argument's a little bit weaker on the five liter V8 because they now have, um, uh, was it multi-displacement system or basically it turns cylinders off while you're driving. So there's more complexity to that five liter V8 now because it has the turbo, the cylinders that deactivate as you're driving. So your eight cylinder becomes a four cylinder. It's something GM's done for years. So again, back to this, this debate, I can tell you from my research on looking through car compliance and doing this for years. Um, and again, the EcoBoost engine, the turbocharged engine has been out for more than a decade. I can tell you that the data doesn't back up the turbo claims. I know it's shocking. People want the turbos to fail. They want to be complex. They want things to burn up. They want two to $3,000 per turbos. They're going to point to issues like the Tundra have with the wastegate issue. They're going to point to issues like this. You'll see it in the comments all the time. You'll see it right in the comments of this video. People are going to tell you about their brother's friend's uncle, or they had one that blew up the turbos. It's going to happen. You're going to have it. There are times when a turbocharged engine is going to fail. It's just, it's just the odds are against you. Ford builds a lot of trucks. At some point, some of those are going to fail. But I can tell you that I have, in my research, I've seen more five liter V8 issues than I have twin turbo issues. So keep that in mind as you're out there shopping. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean to me that, you know, a turbocharged engine is going to be terrible. I bought one in 21. I bought one in 22. Uh, I bought one in 23. I'm buying the Ford, or excuse me, the Ram 1500 with the turbos in 2024. And uh, throughout the years, we've bought different vehicles that have turbocharged engines as well. Haven't had an issue, but there, if you do have an issue, it is pretty darn expensive to replace. And it does piss you off because here it is, it's turbo that failed. So just something to keep in mind. So that's the details I have for you on today's video on the known problems of F50. Pretty comments down below. What are you guys seeing? What I missed? Uh, always curious to know what you guys are seeing out there in the real world. And I try to be out there as much as I can as well. So for more trick videos over here, website down below as well. I'll put that link to that, that story. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.